Today we're going to paint a rose and we're going to mix a lot of grays. Let's get started. All right, here's the photograph. It's a photograph that I took and you can use it if you would like to. And I'm going to simplify this rose. We're both going to simplify this rose. Now, usually when I'm doing these demos, I speed them up a lot because I don't have the patience to watch people paint. This is probably going to be the slowest demo I've ever done. And um, if you don't like to watch slow demos, then, and you're watching this on YouTube, you can touch this, the screen and um, three dots will appear on the upper right hand side and you can speed this up if you want to. You can also slow it down, but I would recommend speeding it up. But there's a reason that I slowed this down. So, um, so let's start here. The first thing is I'm going to simplify this rose. And although I said we're going to be mixing grays, the first thing I needed to find was the dark elements in the rose. And again, they're not very dark. Everything is going to be about um, very, very similar in value. So I found those dark spots and I made them quite saturated. You see how red they are? Because if I can keep one spot of this rose very saturated and then mix grays to support it, that saturated spot will look even more vivid. Now I'm mixing grays. Now the reason I wanted to slow this down and talk about grays is because I'm making warm grays and cold, uh, warm and cool grays. Um, the cool grays tend to have quite a bit of red, red in them and a little bit of blue. And then the warm grays have more red in them and very little blue. And that's how I can distinguish between the warm gray and the cooler gray. And I'm mixing those on the side. So where it's, then I squint and look at the picture and I try to determine where there are shifts, where something shifts from being warm which tends to be lighter as well as somewhat yellower and where things become cool which for example is on the side of the rose to the right where things are cooler and things tend to be more violet and I want to remember that as I'm working. Uh, it's a number 20 brush which is a big brush for this size piece of paper. The actual paper, the paper is only 8 by 8 inches so that's a small sheet of paper. Now the reason for this is because I don't want to create every crease that's in that rose. I want to simplify the rose as much as I can. And as you, as you know if you painted roses it can be quite complicated. Now if you look at the rose, see what I'm doing right now, there's quite a bit of orange on that side of the rose orange but nothing is coming in. No, no orange or red is approaching this piece of paper without a little bit of um, its complementary color. In other words a little bit of blue to kind of gray it down. So amazingly enough even though these look like colors, I mean they do look like colors, you can see orange, you can see a violet, you can see somewhat of a yellow. They're all grayed down and the way that I grayed them down was to put a little bit of their complementary color in the mix. Just a tiny bit. And a tiny bit goes a long way. That's what you have to be careful of. A tiny bit goes a really long way. If you go too far, if you add too much of the complementary color, you will end up with a true gray. And, you know, I've painted those paintings before. They look very dull and lifeless. That was not the goal. The goal was to, basically, to have, let's see, how can I put this? To have as much color in my gray as it was possible to have, which is takes a while to mix. It takes a while to mix, make those mixes. Now I'm reinforcing the, the, um, the vivid part. If I reinforce that vivid part, then the, uh, the grays that support it, like I said, will look a little bit more um, um, colorful. Colorful? They'll, they'll, they'll be set off better. All right, I'm not sure what I'm doing here. Um, I left the white of my, my paper white, and um, later uh, as we go along, I'm going to get rid of that. Now, the reason I get rid of most of the whites of the paper is because if you look at that rose, there's no direct sunlight on this rose. It's a northern light. But what is happening on that rose is that there is one side of the rose that is distinctly darker than the other side, and I can't leave any white on the darker side of the rose or it won't be um, true to the way our eyes really see something. You know, where the sun hits, even if it's indirect sunlight, where the sunlight hits, that can be white. But if it is a bounced off light from somewhere, then it really can't be white. So I have to be careful of that. So that's where I am right now. I'm, I took a little break, I think, and then I came back. 
And although I like my whites, I realize I have to get rid of, of some because on that side of the rows, there are no whites, no true whites. And I admit there's a certain amount of fiddling going on here, which I wish, wish I hadn't have done. You know, I'm not as loose as I would have liked to be by now. Eh, these sound like excuses. Let's not listen to excuses. <laughs> we all have excuses, right? And I didn't make a dab for every color I was using. You know, in the end, um, I did use a lot of colors, but I tried to stay true to the plan. Remember, the plan was to use as few strokes as possible, use a large brush to put in the most vivid color in the area where I saw it the most, which is where those petals meet the inside of that rose, and to leave that pure color, as much pure color as I could, in other words, not mixing it with a complement. And then everything else would be supported, but grayed down to some extent so that things would look more vivid. So those were my goals overall. And I think in the end, I did carry through on, on my goals. Um, let's see, oh, I also needed to put in a background. It's a, it's a fairly supportive background. It's a neutral gray, but if you squint, you'll see that gray has quite a bit of uh, green in it. So again, the whole point of this painting is to mix grays, but not to make them gray, to find as much color as I possibly could whenever I mixed a gray. And the way of mixing that gray was to use complementary colors. And remember, the complementary color is the opposite to the color on the color, color wheel. So the opposite of red would be green. So there's a lot of red and green going on here but I'm being very careful about the amounts. Now, the other thing that I'm being really careful of is I'm using a, a, a thick amount of paint. I didn't make big puddles because this is not a large painting, but what I did do was I kept the paint quite thick. Sometimes I used it directly from, um, almost right from the tube with almost no water in it at all. Again, because I needed, the, um, I needed to keep things as vibrant as I could, even though I'm going for grays. So I, 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 I hope that makes some sense. If it doesn't make any sense, please send me your questions so that I can um, more directly answer them. You know, maybe what I need to do is make a demo of actually mixing the different grays because what happens when I'm mixing the grays is I will shift. I can, I can um, see them. I, my, my palette, of course, is white. And so I can shift them and say to myself, is that warm or is that cool? And if it's warm, for example, if I mixed a red, uh, if it's warm, then I'll add a little bit of orange or yellow to it. And if it's cool, then I'll add a little bit of um, viridian to it. Viridian is the only green that I have on my palette. So I think we're getting pretty near the end here because I realized, I, oh gee, I started to fiddle. That's always a mistake. Hmm. It's interesting doing these videos because I can see where I, not where I went wrong, but where I should have stopped. That, that happens somewhat frequently. Oh well, um, nothing, nothing terrible. Just wish I had stopped, uh, but I didn't. Um, so those are just some finishing touches. So again, this is a rose. It is mostly, it is a neutral rose. Remember, it's, um, it's not pink. This actual rose is a white rose. It's off white, it's sort of a peach, but where it goes in the center, you'll always see with a rose and with lots of flower forms that where the form meets the stem, things will become more um, vivid. And so um, I, I think I, I hit that at the very first thing that I did, and I think, uh, I think that was correct. This is, this is future Joe chiming in now. I didn't like the opening of that rose. It bothered me enormously. And so I came back in. You see those dark spots? There aren't many of them, but I wanted to fix that rose. I didn't like the way it went into the center. And I like this one a lot better. Everything else I stand by. All right, keep the whites of your paper white, your paint sweat, mass for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.